marketing team here at Lapster. Um, hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be facilitating the webinar today, and joining me is Katie. Hello. Hi. Welcome, <laughs> Katie. She's one of our simulation directors here at Lapster. Um, yeah. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the new organic chemistry simulations. Uh, but before we get started, um, some practical information. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please feel free to type them uh, into the question box of the webinar platform. It should be right there to the right of your screen. Uh, we'll make sure to leave some time at the end to answer any of your questions. Um, however, if you have any questions afterwards, you can always send them to me at aliyah.labster.com and I'll make sure to follow up with you as soon as possible. Uh, secondly, um, this webinar is being recorded, so if you have to drop out at any time or if you miss anything, um, don't worry, we'll be sending you the recording um, by email afterwards so you can watch it in your own time and share it with your peers if you want to. So, yeah. So, what are we going to be talking about today? Um, firstly, we're going to have uh, a brief overview of the new organic chemistry simulations, so which topics are being covered. Uh, as well as the different use cases that can be used with them. Uh, then we'll dive deeper into the design process um, behind the creation of these simulations, and Katie will give us some great insight to that. And finally, the exciting part, um, we'll be giving you a quick rundown of all the new um, organic chemistry simulations, um, and we'll be touching on the cool new features, highlights, storylines, and learning objectives that will be um, associated with each of them. So, yeah, with that said, let's get started. Katie? Thanks so much, Helena, <laughs> and thanks everyone for joining us online today. Uh, we're really excited to tell you more about um, the new organic chemistry simulations that we've created recently. Um, and just wanted to introduce myself a little bit. Um, so I'm one of the simulation directors here at Labster, and um, I've been here for the last year, but have a long history of working in scientific content development and supporting chemistry education, both formally and informally. So I've met a lot of chemistry teachers along the way, um, and yeah, I kind of empathize and understand um, pain points for you um, in, your, in your teaching and also for the students learning and the things that they find tricky. So um, yeah, I love to, to help um, create innovative ways to help the teaching and learning of chemistry, um, and this is all part of that. So I'm really excited to tell you more about our new organic chemistry simulations. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. So we've just got a short trailer here to show you and um, a quick run through of some of the features of our simulations. So our simulations are um, virtual laboratory simulations that cover conceptual and um, fundamentals of organic chemistry. Um, we use things like animations, uh, molecular visualization um, to get um, conceptual ideas and theories across. And we do it in a very interactive and fun and engaging way, um, trying to teach things a little bit differently to how students or learners might experience it in the classroom. So on the screen now, you'll see some of the topics that we um, have simulations on at the moment, um, but this is just the beginning for us. Um, so we have things like nucleophilic substitution, addition, elimination reactions, we'll try and cover all of those. And as you can see, we do, do it in a really fun, uh, fun way. We've got um, some orbital, animations there, build a molecule, always a, always a favorite. And the user can also practice some practical techniques, which is great as a pre-lab activity. Um, so the user can get used to, or the students can get used to um, the actual intricacies of chemistry techniques in the lab. So these are just some of the ways that um, we are teaching chemistry with our labster simulations. Um, and again, here you can see we're teaching um, different reactive intermediates with our molecular visualization tool. And we do all this embedded in some really engaging and relevant storylines, um, which help the learners really grasp chemistry in context in everyday life. We also have um, a series of questioning techniques. We like to use uh, multiple choice questions, as you can see here on the screen. And the learners can click through our theory pages as well, which support um, their, their knowledge. And if they're not quite sure of the answer to a question, they can head to the theory pages, read up a little bit more before answering the questions, which is super helpful. And you can see here we have a teacher dashboard so you can keep track of each student's progress um, and take scores from that if you wish and use that as a, a marking tool in your course. So that's just a very, very quick run through of some of the features of our simulations. I think it really helps to see them kind of live and in practice. 
So yes, we try to cover the core concepts in organic chemistry, and we've just begun building these in the last year or so. And so we're really just getting started, and we try to pick the, the topics and concepts that really help um, chemistry teachers and students um, in, the, in the best way possible. So at the moment, we have 15 simulations that could be used to teach organic chemistry courses. And we do have more technique-based simulations coming soon, which is super exciting. Yeah. Yeah, so again, we do have lots of other great content in, for example, general chemistry, um, biochemistry. And um, if you want to know more about if you want to know more about these um, related simulations, we'll be touching on that a little bit later on. Um, but you can also find a more detailed overview of these simulations, both core and related, um, in a course overview document that I'll be sending out later in the follow-up email to this webinar. And you'll find uh, detailed descriptions of all these simulations in the course, um, how do you say, organic chemistry course package. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, so yeah, use cases. Yeah, so there are lots of ways that we already know that um, our customers like to use um, our Labster products specifically for chemistry. Um, and many, um, there are lots of different ways that these can be used in, in your teaching practice. Um, so for example, some people use them as pre-lab uh, preparation. So if the students are for the first time learning a new technique, um, the instructors can send um, students away to go and have a practice virtually um, where there's unlimited reagents, which is always a great one, um, and also the opportunity to reset and explore, um, which there isn't the time for in a traditional wet lab um, situation. So pre-lab is, is one kind of use of our simulations. Um, it's also been used to extend physical lab sessions, so perhaps um, Physical labs may the experiment will maybe only take an hour and a half, two hours, and for the remainder of the session, instructors like to send uh, the students away to go and play one of our simulations to consolidate that learning. And um, it's also used, uh, sorry, our simulations are also used to supplement lecture time. So some of our simulations are more conceptually based and focused on focus on the learning of fundamental organic chemistry um, underpinning theories. And um, so it can be used in that way. And some of our teachers and instructors that we've spoken to recently actually would love to use Labster products as wet lab alternatives. So in the cases of online courses, be able to completely replace wet labs eventually and um, to save sending out um, pre-made kits to students that are learning remotely. Um, so that's an ideal for the future. And also um, we can use simulations um, for teaching best practice in practical techniques, um, which we're, we're building our, our catalogue now and we hope to come out with more of those soon. So there's lots of different ways that Labster simulations can be used to teach organic chemistry, um, and it's definitely intended that these supplement um, the teaching and learning of organic chemistry, um, yeah, and it can be used in lots of different ways. Exactly. Yeah, and here are just some examples of chemistry professors who use um, Labster's virtual labs for chemistry, um, all in very different use cases. So, for example, Sabine from Stirling University, Scotland, um, uses Labster as an optional exercise to help supplement uh, what she teaches in class and really help reinforce um, the knowledge that her students learn, um, you know, in their own time. And then we have Alain from the University of Ottawa. Um, he uses it to extend uh, physical lab sessions, especially in the face of, you know, lab cutbacks, um, as well as scaling his chemistry course, um, because he has a course a class size of around 3,000 students, so he's found that's a really good uh, resource for scaling uh, courses for big, large classes. Uh, finally, we have Kamesh from Corning Community College, and he's found that Labster was an essential resource, especially for his uh, completely online chemistry course. Um, yeah, and he's also found that it's um, a super good resource for, uh, you know, improving um, engagement in non-majors, which is what his class is predominantly made up of. Um, as well as to improve student outreach of um, remote learners and uh, learners outside of a state or outside of a physical classroom. So, yeah, um, links to these three testimonials, if you want to read more about their stories, um, will be uh, included in the follow-up email as well. So, yeah, you can read up on them. They're great, really interesting stories. So, let's talk about the design process. 
Yeah, so we hope to take you a little bit behind the scenes here and talk you through um, how we like to design our simulations at Labster. Um, so yeah, um, our Labster platform is a fully simulated interactive 3D learning environment. Um, most of the um, simulations are based in the lab at some point um, during the simulation, um, which allows for uh, learners to practice um, practical techniques, um, go through simulations on, on different um, levels that you might not be able to in, in real life. So taking them down to the molecular level and taking them right out um, to, to the real world and taking them to contexts that they may not experience otherwise. Um, so yeah, we were super proud to be able to, to build these simulated environments. So yes, what is a Labster simulation? Some of you may or may not have used our simulations so far, um, but our simulations are an interactive and immersive 3D learning experience. And they're designed to help complement and supplement lectures and labs in science subjects. Labster um, started out in biology and biochemistry topics um, and have recently begun building our chemistry catalogue. So as Alia said, um, we have some general chemistry topics as well as organic chemistry, which is fantastic. And we hope to build on that catalogue um, in the coming years. So yes, um, our Labster simulations can also be integrated with LMS systems um, and can be used um, using the dashboard that I showed earlier in the, in the trailer. It can be integrated with your LMS system to keep track of scores for students and to track the progress, which is great. And it's possible to log into our simulations uh, in class or at home um, using an app or a computer-based program. And our simulations are playable on either a computer or with a VR headset if you have them. Um, so giving you two different options for the experience. And yes, uh, we, we stick to three kind of key design principles when we build our simulations. And um, so the first one being that we create a really engaging learning environment. We're able to, with our virtual simulations, create a context around the, the concept and the theory that we like to teach. Um, but we, we know that students learn best if they are super engaged and super into the, the content that they're learning. We also like to focus on deep learning, so we do embed pedagogical principles into the design of our simulations um, to check prior knowledge and also to check that the student or the learner is following along as we go in the simulation. And we also love to leverage unique opportunities um, to teach in different virtual environments. So luckily, um, time travel is possible in virtual simulations and we can take people to outer space wherever we want to take the learner to, to best enhance their learning. So we'll see some of those fun environments later on. So yes, the learning objectives of our simulations are very much at the heart of, of our simulations and what we do. So we like to go out and do our market research. So we speak to customers, existing customers of Labster to hear what topics they would find most helpful next or the things that their students find difficult learning in the classroom or things that maybe Labster could create that really enhances the learning of conceptual topics um, that might be quite hard to grasp um, on molecular or atomic or subatomic levels. So we've got to do the, the market research with both existing customers and potential customers, so people that maybe never used our product before, which is fantastic. So we take that knowledge along with some input from different chemistry instructors and teachers and um, to hear what the teaching pain points are um, and how we can support the learning and teaching of chemistry. And we take all that together with um, a curriculum alignment process in-house. So depending on um, the course that we're looking at, we'll go out um, and do some research into the different course structures and the different syllabi of different organic chemistry courses and align that to the market research that we do have and the knowledge that we have um, and then decide which learning objectives we want to teach through our simulations. So that kind of is really the heart of what we, we think about when we build a simulation. Mm -hmm. And then next up, um, we really feel that a great storyline is essential to student engagement. So we could just teach the, the fundamentals and the concepts, but it's not really engaging. Really, We really need to hook the students in. And by giving our simulations a really fun context, it really helps engage learners, especially non-majors, as you mentioned earlier, who maybe aren't going to continue in chemistry forever, but we, we want them to enjoy chemistry and understand how it applies to everyday life. So chemistry in real life contexts is, uh, is really important to us and we like to bring real stories and also um, imagined stories um, to the front, uh, forefront of our simulations and teach the chemistry throughout that. So 
we, we can take students, as I mentioned, to outer space. Um, you'll see on the screen there we have a, an environment there um, that looks otherworldly. That's Titan, one of Saturn's moons, which is actually a hydrocarbon world. It rains methane there, which is quite fun. And this is all real life. And um, so it's fun to teach students about things that are real, but take them on a bit of an adventure and ask them to help us use chemistry and um, to solve some problems and challenges along the way. And mm -hmm. um, we also have um, other ones, um, storylines involving drug discovery and um, where we can indeed time travel. So the student will help us out with a challenge project is about to be binned, but can they save the day? And then they travel 20 years in the future, skipping that whole drug discovery process thing, and then finding out which drug it was that they were helping create, which is um, a really fun um, environment to learn in as well. And also um, some craft brew um, challenges there at the top. Um, so coming up with some flavor chemistry and um, using substitution reactions to try and create some new flavors for some craft beer for a cafe that's not doing so well. <laughs> and so by creating all these fun storylines, uh, we really hope to hook and engage students and learners um, with the chemistry content and to understand a bit better why chemistry is really important in everyday life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yes, uh, so our learning objectives and storyline are really embedded in our learning activities. So throughout the simulation, um, we pose different challenges or different missions for the students. And throughout those, um, we use different questioning techniques to assess how much prior knowledge um, the learner has already, but also to assess um, how, how they're following along the simulation and maybe offer different um, routes for learning, depending on the simulation. We build these learning activities as gamified learning experiences. So perhaps um, they'll do something that is recreating a real life lab situation, but then the other part of the simulation might be completely gamified and it's not something that they would do in real life, but it really brings the chemistry to the forefront of their mind. We also, as I mentioned, embed pedagogical principles um, in all of our learning activities, so making sure that they're, um, they're well grounded in educational research. And we also consider um, the user experience, you know, students get very frustrated if they're having trouble um, interacting with the simulation in the right way, if they're clicking it not, you know, not quite right or something's not working quite well, we have to think about all these things when we're designing our simulations. So we're thinking about a lot of things when we develop these simulations. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, as I've alluded to already, um, with this storyline, we love to have our kind of really engaging introductions. So really um, trying to, to draw the, the student in, tell them about a challenge or something that we would love their help to solve and setting the scene for learning some, some chemistry. And then we take them through some missions, which are learning activities that support the teaching of these learning objectives that we've developed the simulation around. And then at the end of the, the simulation, the user has, um, the student has acquired a lot of knowledge and they, they've been able to apply it in this um, specific storyline or situation and been able to solve a problem, which is really rewarding for the student. So um, yeah, we take them on a journey on our simulations, which is really quite fun. And yes, something that we um, we also do um, along the way when we're thinking about how to design a simulation is to think about the ways in which chemistry is already taught and if there's a way that we could improve that or maybe innovate and make um, new features that could teach chemistry in a way that maybe hasn't been explored before. So we develop um, new features um, on our platform. And um, so things like this molecular visualizer is something that we've come up with in the last year to try and help teach chemistry um, both in the 3D learning environment and in the 2D. So you'll see at the back there, there's a there's a whiteboard to help the student relate what they might have seen in a textbook or on a blackboard um, to the 3D reaction that's happening right in front of their eyes. So this makes it a really engaging, immersive experience where the student can click on an atom or grab a molecule and kind of bring them together to actually make the reaction happen. And they really feel like the cause and effect is there um, so that they're actually in it at the molecular level, which is really, really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking back to when I was in university taking my organic chemistry classes. And yeah, this is one of the things that I found the most challenging, um, you know, matching the 2D representations, and the reaction mechanisms on paper. And how do they translate into like real life? Um, how do they look in real life, the 3D models and trying to imagine what the next step of the reaction was? Yeah. So I can totally appreciate how this would be beneficial for visual learners um, like myself. Um, yeah, so 
super cool feature and very yeah. helpful, I can imagine. Yeah, and, and not only that, and even just in the last couple of weeks, there's been some research that's come out um, that's highlighted that students do actually struggle um, switching between different models of chemical representation. So what they see um, in a textbook or on a blackboard, they may not be able to kind of relate it directly to what happens at the molecular mm -hmm. or subatomic levels. Yeah. So anything that we can do to help them relate between two, you know, between two of those levels, that's that's really one benefit of our simulations and the, the technology that we do have. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to hear of uh, yeah, if you can suggest any more ways that we can do that, then we'd love yeah. to hear about it. We'd love to hear it. <laughs> awesome. So yes, who are we? Um, so Alia and myself are part of a worldwide team. There are around 123 people working for Labster at the moment. And um, although we do have offices in Denmark, Indonesia and Boston, we do have quite a remote workforce as well. So we were spread across the whole world, which is great. Um, and we're super passionate, as you can see from the photos here, <laughs> we're super passionate about teaching science um, education in innovative and engaging ways using um, this awesome technology that we have. So we do like to live by our company values, one of which is have, have fun. fun. <laughs> so you can see that we do that here. Um, but we really do, and um, we are just a bunch of nerds that want to help people learn science in a really fun way. Um, and yeah, we're kind of a really uh, grateful and happy team to do that. And recently we've started working in kind of a dedicated um, chemistry squad. So I'm part of the chemistry <laughs> squad. <laughs> Some of you will enjoy this uh, little nerdy moment, if you'll forgive me. <laughs> um, so I'm part of the chemistry squad and we build um, the chemistry simulations together, which is um, a really is testament to Labster's commitment to developing innovative new organic chemistry content um, for students and teachers. And um, so there's myself there and there's also other simulation directors. We work alongside each other to come up with storylines and come up with the science content and make sure that we're teaching it in a, in a fun way, adding some puns and jokes in there. Love that. <laughs> and also um, we work alongside artists that work um, to create not only 2D art, but 3D art um, for the things that you see in our simulation that have a 3D quality. Uh, we, our content developers are the, the guys that um, do the programming behind the scenes, so all the mechanics of how everything works in the simulation, those are our magicians. And uh, we also have yoga um, SQA, standing for Simulation Quality Assurance. So nothing gets launched until yoga's happy. Um, so he helps us test everything, make sure that everything plays beautifully and that everything is uh, really clear to the student and that they can work through the challenges and the, solve the problems effectively Yeah, in our simulations. So that's the chemistry team. We're really excited to be developing more and more chemistry stuff, which is great. Yeah. And this is an alkyl halide, is it not? Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, uh, this is an alkyl halide. I had a bit of, bit of a joyful moment realizing that we, <laughs> we together make an alkyl halide, one of the most useful synthetic molecules in organic chemistry. <laughs> I love that. Amazing. So our new the organic chemistry package and coming soon. Yeah, so we would love to tell you a little bit more about the specifics of the different organic chemistry simulations that we have available right now. Um, so the first one being the introduction to organic chemistry. This is the kind of the main uh, the mainstay of our organic chemistry uh, package. And in this, um, users, the students can learn all about the fundamentals that they need to know for organic chemistry. So their mission is to identify the the, the right functional groups in their friend's medicine and um, to make sure that his friend can take the medicine safely. And um, so obviously they need to go to the lab to go and work out um, exactly what functional groups are present in that medicine. And um, so the, the students will learn about um, bond angles, the valence electrons and carbon and different other organic molecules, um, the rules of nomenclature and being able to identify functional groups confidently and be able to give examples of use of different organic compounds. So, so this one's really fun um, because it's, it's lab based, but not as students know it. So they can build molecules themselves and compare it to um, the 2D representations of the molecules as they might see them in their textbook, um, but build them themselves and start to understand, oh, okay, so the angles here are a little bit wrong. Um, I need to kind of pull that out and back off and replace it to make the right um, bond shape. So, uh, so yes, this is a great starting point for our organic chemistry package. Um, in this one, we have, um, Sorry, could we just move that so I can see? Yeah. Sorry about that. We're just having a little 
So there we go, it's perfect. And um, so in our electrophilic addition reaction simulation, we explore the reactions of hydrocarbons, um, the kind of mainstay of organic chemistry. And in this one, um, we take the student to Titan, um, where there's a hydrocarbon world, and the, these students have to identify all the different hydrocarbon resources that are there and um, identify the reactions that those hydrocarbons can undergo and suggest uh, ways for that they can use these hydrocarbons and reactions to build uh, materials so they can build a colony on Titan just in case we need to exit planet Earth. So in this one, yes, um, again, there's some molecular visualization features in there. So the students can follow along the electrophilic addition reactions in 3D um, and also um, can look at the reactive intermediates uh, close up to see um, to see for themselves how Makovnikov's rule works um, and how carbocations work um, and how they, we can predict um, which which way a reaction is going to go. Um, so this one's a, a, again another kind of good standard for the organic chemistry package, um, and they also get to perform a virtual bromine test, which is quite fun too. Awesome. And yes, uh, nucleophilic substitution reactions. Um, they learn a lot about alkyl halides in this one. And um, yeah, so this one is is, is a really fun gamified simulation um, with lots of different challenges uh, regarding substitution reactions. Um, so in this one, the students will, uh, there's a, a game where they design the reaction. Um, so they know which flavor molecules they want to make and they have to kind of work backwards in a bit of a retrosynthetic synthetic fashion to work out which starting materials they need to use. So then they select the correct alkyl halides and nucleophiles um, to make the, the different flavor molecules to help out their friend in the cafe who needs to come up with some new flavor ideas for their beer. <laughs> and so this one's a lot of fun for those reasons. Um, the students can also become very familiar with reaction energy profiles um, and how affecting the different variables in a, a substitution reaction can change the, the shape of the graphs that you might see in a reaction energy diagram. So getting them used to those concepts, uh, but in, in a fun way and in, in an engaging way, I hope. Um, so yes, we cover both SN1 and SN2, and the, the mechanisms can be played um, both forward and back in, in this simulation, which is great. So the student can play it forward and then rewind and keep playing it back and forth if they like, just to, to get a feel for what's actually happening on the molecular level, which is great fun. And there's also a, a fun solvent selection challenge in there um, when they know whether they're making, uh, whether they're going to follow an SN1 or an SN2 protocol, they need to choose the right solvent for each of those reactions. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a fun one um, to to get students thinking about retrosynthesis and um, choosing starting materials and solvents to be able to design their own reaction, but learning about substitution at the same time. Awesome. Yes, and um, so elimination reactions. Um, this one is great fun. Um, the students arrive at a polymer research lab and there's a, a bit of a problem, there's a byproduct in, in one of their, their processes. So the, uh, the reaction is converting cyclohexanol to cyclohexene, but they've got an unusual byproduct in there that they're not expecting. So, um, so the challenge um, sends them off to the lab to learn about the theory a little bit. And um, so learning bit about the different differences between E1 and E2 mechanisms, comparing the different reactivity of alkyl halides and being able to predict um, using Zaitsev's rule, um, what the product might be, and then being able to name those products at the end and um, being able to predict the, the stereochemistry around the double bond as well. So this one's fun too. At the bottom there, you can see um, there's a distillation setup, which the student has to explore around a little bit and understand the process of distillation. Yeah, awesome. So another great simulation that we have, um, organic chemistry reactivity rules. Now this one is an absolute fundamental for helping embed the fundamentals of reactivity and what the rules are for organic compounds reacting with each other. So in this one, there's lots of really interactive and engaging molecular visualization features. So the, the students can interact directly with the reaction components and um, we can explore in different modes so they can activate these green arrows here are um, bond polarity arrows so the the student can indicate which direction um, the bond is polarized in they also uh, are required to place lone pairs in the right places and kind of um, guess which parts are nucleophilic electrophilic all those sorts of things but again being able to relate those to the 2d 
um, images on the whiteboard as well. Um, so lots of different visual, uh, nice visual learning um, features in there. And some, uh, also some fun games um, with sorting molecules in order of polarity, uh, comparing the reactivity of different uh, alkyl halides. Again, they feature heavily in our simulations at the moment. <laughs> Um, so yes, this one is definitely um, a kind of keystone to our organic chemistry package and really helps um, cement some of those fundamental um, concepts and ideas. And here we have um, the nucleophilic addition simulation. Um, so in this one, the students learn not only about nucleophilic addition, but specifically the Grignard reaction. Um, and in this simulation, um, the student helps drug discovery scientists on a project. Uh, they're about to be in uh, a project that didn't turn out the way that they, they wanted, which a lot of us will agree happens a lot in real life in a chemistry lab. And so in this case, the student um, helps the scientist who has just one more idea for a reaction and off they go when they do a nucleophilic addition reaction. Um, so using a green yard reaction to um, make an alcohol. So in this one, um, that, that's the context. They, then go and make the green yard reagent and carry out a green yard uh, reaction themselves. So they're, they're practicing their air and moisture sensitive and um, practical techniques, but in a virtual environment, which is awesome. And um, so they get the chance to practice. And we can also provide little hints and tips to say, oh, you forgot to replace your stock or quick, there's going to be moisture in your reaction. <laughs> and so, yes, and they get to kind of work through that step by step. But then gradually the instructions die away a little bit and allow the students a bit more freedom to kind of make their own mistakes and explore freely, which is great fun. And in this one, um, yes, we cover the mechanism and examples of nucleophilic addition. But yes, the, the kind of main focus of this one is the Green Yard Reaction Practical, which I think uh, works really well. And I think provides a, a real feel to the flow of what happens practically and in which sequence in a, in a lab. Mm -hmm. So this one is a mix of both uh, concept and technique focus sort of simulation, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this one is kind of 50-50 concept. And top, um, the picture at the bottom there is designing an organometallic reagent. So um, working out which one they want to use to make a green yard reaction. So yes, the concepts are, are there first and yeah. uh, the theory, but then they go on to actually do the practical as well, which yeah. is good fun. Yeah, so um, that covers the kind of most recent additions to the organic chemistry package. Um, and we also have ionic and covalent bonds in there as well. That's another simulation that's been available for a while, but also very useful for teaching organic chemistry. And we also have, as Aliyah mentioned, um, some related titles that um, are not specifically part of the organic chemistry package, but can be used um, depending on the context in which you're teaching. So things like atomic structure, chemistry safety, equilibrium, periodic table of elements, solution preparation, it's quite fun as well. Titration you might have played before, if you've used Ladder before, um, we've recently upgraded that, um, so it's been improved, which is great, great as well. Um, and things like stoichiometric calculations too. So there's lots of really great fundamental simulations in there that help underpin the teaching of organic chemistry. Yeah, yeah like I said before, um, if you want a more in-depth look at, um, especially the related titles, um, it'll all be covered in the course overview document that I'll be sending out in the email. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. So coming oh, yeah. soon. Yes, got a sneak preview for you guys. And um, so coming very, very soon, we hope maybe tomorrow or within the week. That's very soon. <laughs> yeah, so this is a true, true sneak peek for you. And we have an elimination versus substitution predict the outcome simulation coming out. So this one is very explorative and we really uh, love the way that this one works. And um, so in this simulation, we have one reaction flask and the student, after refreshing their knowledge about the differences between elimination and substitution and what might promote one over the other, the student then gets hands on and freely mixes um, different mixtures of alkyl halides and bases and solvents together and um, basically assesses the outcome. So they can see what they've created in the flask and they can then take the flask, sit it over on the side, and then reset um, and just instantly keep carrying out different reactions to see what products they make. So obviously, um, some of them will um, produce an elimination product, some will produce substitution products, some a mixture. So there's lots of learning points in this one. Um, and I think it's really a really fun, open-ended uh, exploration mm -hmm. type simulation, which we are hoping to do more of in the future. Yeah. Um, and it's really quite, fun, a fun way for students to learn about, 
you know, which might actually happen in this one flask, which, am, which way can I make this go? Can I tweak it to tweak the conditions to make substitution happen? Or yeah, yeah. so this one is really good fun. Uh, so keep an eye out for that one. It's coming yeah. very, very soon. Yeah. And this goes back into productive failure and that whole thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, in this one, there's unlimited reagents. So if the students uh, have made the wrong thing or they want to try something else, they can do that. So yeah, unlimited reagents are great in this context. And um, yeah, there's no wrong answers for this one. Uh, we guide them with questions and conversations about what's happening inside the reaction flask. But then ultimately, when we ask them a question, we say, if you don't know the answer, that's cool. Why don't you go and mix them together and find out what product you make, and then they can find out the answer for themselves. So it's a really um, inclusive and um, quite fun way to learn about um, elimination and substitution yeah. reaction. That's super exciting. Yeah. And make sure you keep, eye, keep an eye out for that one. But if you are very interested in any of the um, new organic chemistry simulations that we just talked about, you can try them out today. Um, if you're an existing Labster user, uh, you can take a look at your faculty resources page and under the organic chemistry sections, it will all be listed there. Um, however, if you want to know or learn a little bit more about how you can use virtual labs to teach organic chemistry or just in your chemistry course in general, uh, we do have a dedicated landing page um, where we've collected all of Labster's resources related to that topic. So for example, we have a white paper um, a webinar and also this webinar coming up <laughs> um, and also the chemistry testimonials as I mentioned before and yeah you can find them at the link here labster.com slash organic chemistry virtual labs um, this link will also be included in the follow-up email so yeah don't worry about writing this down awesome now time for questions um, before I get to the questions uh, if you're watching the recording um, you could always email me your questions at aliyahatlabster.com. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, let's see, we have one question. Are reaction byproducts identified and percentage reaction direction? Ah, good question. Um, so in the elimination versus substitution reaction simulation, um, we identify the byproducts. So if, there, if the reaction is a major SN2, but there's a, an elimination product in there as well, we do identify that byproduct so they can see we have um, little pop-up text boxes that say major product is this and then minor product is this other one. Uh, we don't specify the percentage reaction direction in this particular simulation because this one is um, much more of a free open exploration one so they are just kind of pouring stuff together and seeing the outcome so we're not actually measuring um, specific weights and volumes and um, so we don't really want to specify the kind of percentage outcome of that. Um, so yeah, we try not to be too accurate when we're dealing with non-specifics. Um, but we do identify the byproducts, which is yeah important okay. for the students to learn what the potential byproducts could be. Awesome. Cool. Um, let's see, we finished a little bit early now. Um, we don't seem to be having any more questions. So yeah, we might just end right now. Um, and again, if you have any questions, again, email me at ilia.labster.com and I'll get back to you. Um, but for now, this brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. And also thank you to you, Katie, for being such an awesome guest. Thank you for um, having me. I hope you've learned a lot about our brand new organic chemistry simulations. And yeah, hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next webinar. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye.